Hey folks, this is Emily. I want to talk with you about something important that I've been looking at over sort of the last four or five days related to extreme heat. So if you've been following along with the state level forecasts, you've seen me show this figure a lot from the NCA5, looking at projected changes to hot and cold extremes at 2C of global warming. I was getting ready to make myself do Arizona and I looked in at this and I was like, wow, Phoenix is really not seeing that big of an increase in hot days. And I was like, something's got to be wrong, you know, because I lived in the Phoenix area for a long time. And I've heard on the ground reports that indicate more than like an orange level in change in days over 95 contemporary. So I started digging a little deeper. Come here with me. If you happen to check out the Boise video, you would have seen me use the NCA Atlas with the heat maps for that for the first time. And you may have noticed me use this. It's got a days over 95 map. It's got a days over 100 map. And it's got a days over 105 map. And I think that you're probably already seeing some of the problem that I'm going to get to with the days over 105. Hang tight. As I've been doing these state level forecasts, I made this assumption that days over 95 was equal to days over 95 plus days over 100 plus days over 105. But actually, as I dig into this layered information, days over 95 only is the days from like 95.1 to 99.9. .9. We're talking about a limited bound there. And that hasn't been a problem previously. This actually doesn't impact any of the NCA5 state level outlooks that I've done in any significant way. Because for virtually every state that I've done, virtually every place that I've done, when you're talking about adding the 9,500 and 105 layer, they sum to within plus or minus of the 95. You'll see. Let's look at this map again. When we talk about days over 105, which is our very scary hot days, our days where we're starting to push against the limits of biological organisms, when we're starting to push against enzyme limits, you see most of the country sees no significant increase in the days over 105 at 2C. You might recall we talked about Florida having this extreme increase in days over 95, but that I thought it was unlikely that most of them were over 100. And look, that's true for Florida. It's a hugely long swelter season, but it's not a significantly hotter swelter season than 100 degrees. So we've got that threat correctly. And in Louisiana, this area here that we identified as having some potential opportunities, some more potential for resilience than we had seen before. Note, fair amount of increase in days over 95, but especially in this band in the foot here, very limited increase in days over 100 like no days over 105. For hot states, fortunately, the way that we've gone through the atlas so far, we haven't run across this problem where I've been saying the increase in heat and giving you inaccurate information. The exception to this, the place where we started to crack into this, was the detailed outlook for Boise, where I did not call enough days in that band from 95 to 99. I gave you accurate information on the number of days above that, and it felt like something was a little wrong. It felt like the numbers weren't adding up because instead of in a plus or minus five within the days over 95 that we're used to seeing on figure 2.11, there were more. However, I feel like as a person who has lived in an arid desert environment, no one who lives in an arid environment really worries too much about days over 95 and under 100, as long as it's cooling off pretty good at night. You get up in the morning and you go hiking. No big deal. But I do think people who live in an arid environment need to be aware of the changes over 105 that we're expecting in this large portion of the country. Let's get back to that and give you a heads up. I'm going to be including this in the state-by-state -state breakdown as we move through states that are impacted. You'll see states that are impacted severely are going to be Arizona, California, Nevada, Texas, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And we see that here on this map, and we see where they are. What's going on with these dark red areas? It's pretty intense. For our friends in Tucson, Pinal County is looking at a 26-day increase in your hot season over 105 as we approach a 2C world. Maricopa County, where we've got Phoenix, where we've got millions and millions of people, 
30 more days over 105 in a 2C warm season. Las Vegas, pretty big change for you, but not that extreme. You're looking at an additional 19 days over 105. And I got to tell you, there are ways that this is for me like the worst one to face at all. San Bernardino County, California, increase of 19 days over 105 compared to historical norms at 2C. And I wanted to take a minute and make this video to help you visualize the size of the threat in this heat basin where we have so many millions and millions of people. I think it's important that in this figure we can see the outline of it and we haven't really talked about it before on the channel. That's your days over 105. Stack it with your days over 100, between 100 and 105. And look, your days between 95 and 100. To me, looking through these three images, 95, over 100, and over 105, paints a compelling picture of radically increased extreme heat that is kind of foreign to North America. This is an unusual new desert environment that's emerging here. I'm going to get more details as we work through the state level outlooks for these impacted states. You should expect Arizona to come out next Thursday. That would be April 18th. I'll talk to you soon. And I promise, you know, every time I screw up, every time that I see that I've had an error in my methodology, I'm going to tell you as soon as I can, and I'm going to do what I can to make it right. As far as it goes so far with this cycle of the NCA5 project doing the state level outlooks, you ought to be okay. I don't think I've given anyone any real bad advice. But I tell you, if I had done the Arizona Outlook saying, oh, Phoenix, you're going to see another 20 days over 95, I don't think that that would have given people the information they needed to make informed life decisions. And I think that it's really important as we move forward, as we think about who is vulnerable, as we think about who in the U.S. needs to move, we're going to have to take a real critical look at both heat and water in these desert cities. Talk to you more soon and take care. Wishing you all the best. Bye. Folks, thanks so much for your support of American Resiliency. It's thanks to viewers like you who have contributed your energy, your money, your time, that we are where we are today, which is off the runway and looking towards year four and five. We're in the middle of a visioning process as we figure out what we want to do with the power that we've accumulated here with AR to figure out what climate information folks need, how to get it to them. If you want to be part of the visioning process, please get in touch. This is inclusive. We're seeking input from everyone in the community. And thanks again for helping. Your involvement keeps this nonprofit going. If you want to give, you can find a donate tab at the top of our webpage or on the about page of our YouTube channel. Thanks so much and talk to you again soon.